Oh, dearie. Is it bad? Should I call 911? Who possibly looked at this and thought, Sure, let's give money towards that. It'd make a great series. And what kind of ditch did they end up in? The Problem Solvers is a Cartoon Network series that came out in 2011. It was a show about a group of detectives, Alpha, Roba, and Horace, solving problems in their hometown of F Far Farborough. F Far Far. I would double check how to pronounce it, but that would require watching the show again. The series ran for one season, with a second being fully produced and dumped on Netflix two years after its cancellation. When it came out and when reminiscing, most saw the show as an unfunny, uninteresting, headache-inducing piece of drivel that had no business being created. Now up until this video, I had never actually seen the series. I feel like most people into this sort of stuff went through phases of enjoying cartoons as kids, then growing up and transitioning into their phase of, <laughs> cartoons are for kids, man, you shouldn't understand. I've got more important stuff to watch, like 13 Reasons Why and uh, High School Musical, what are kids into? Then after that, go right back into liking cartoons again. Yeah, so this show came out while I was in that phase. It's what I enjoy about doing these videos. It's a good way to look back at the stuff I missed out on for a few years. So I want to go back to the problem solvers to see if it's as bad as everyone made it out to be, or... No, yeah, that's about it. Just why was this show so hated? Well, I feel like it's fairly obvious, but for the sake of pacing, let's start from the beginning. The Problem Solvers was created by Ben Jones, who has designed the characters for the show as far back as primary school. In 2000, he collaborated with a few others to form Paper Rad, an art collective known for comics, video art, designs, and a bunch of other stuff. Ben's work had a very distinct style, what was known as Dogma 99. The rules involved in this style included no tablet, no scanning, pure RGB colors only, fake tweening, and as many alpha tricks as possible. They took heavy influence from pop and punk art, and adapted that to their style of bright fluorescent color schemes, trying to make an almost lo-fi look. I live and breathe and love this stuff, but you have to be very careful because it's very potent. He was also a big fan of mid-eye audio. You know, weird pixelated and compressed recordings and sound effects. The more I talk about this, the more the gears sort of turn in your head as to how we wind up with this. But anyway, in 2001, Ben started releasing Flash animations online, some of which featured characters that would end up in the Problem Solvers. And in 2006, Paper Rad released a DVD called Trash Talking, with one of the segments revolving around Alpha, Horse, and Roba, albeit with a slightly different look. Like, for some reason, this guy is bald? I'm calling him this guy because I genuinely forgot what his name was. After befriending an executive producer at Adult Swim, Ben was given the chance to make a pilot for them, with the result being Neon Gnome. Gnome spelled with a K though, I guess it's like cooler eyes. When I was a kid, I found a small fur creature in a sewer thing. It grew up with me and my twin brother, Roba. His name's Alfe. It was a fairly standard short. I actually didn't think it was half bad. It featured the characters trying to get rid of a giant rollerblade on their lawn before the landlord got home. The visuals are a little more muted than the final series. That's a good thing. And while mostly everything stayed the same from this pilot to the final series, the writing style was a lot looser. I can't confirm this, but it feels like a lot of improv was incorporated into this pilot. And like, while it's not good improv per se, I always feel like it has a certain charm to it, you know? Is Saz back from her vacation yet? I don't know. You think she'll evict us if she sees this? Probably. Probably. It's what landlords usually do to us. Yeah, it's got an almost improvisational tone. So after the pilot was finished and uploaded onto Adult Swim's website, the series was referred over to Cartoon Network, with executives feeling his creativity and style would fit better there. Which I guess is code word for, there is not enough swearing and cool blood in this show for adults. So now it was a kid show. Damn, you'd think with all that development and time spent on this, he'd have a pretty good concept on his hands. It lasted 18 episodes. Almost every episode of The Problem Solvers follows the exact same format. Also, before you ask, we will get into the visuals. I get it's the most apparent thing. Let's just get the show out of the way first. We begin the episode with the characters being presented with a problem. They solve the problem. The real problem then arises, where they have to seek the help from this snooty, tux-wearing dog. Guess what his name is? Tux Dog. Can you guess that this is the one Ben came up with in primary school? I get that they don't want every episode to be as simple as, here's our goal, okay, we achieved it, the end. But having a twist every single time sort of defeats the point in having a twist. The writing is not just your generic standard kid show fare. Gone is the oddly charming improv style humor of the pilot, and instead the show is just the most generic thing out there. Like, I wouldn't call it bad, but it's not anything special. Horse is your average straight man. His creepy old man sweater and crappy haircut would imply that he's like a homeless guy who belongs in the background shot of some alleyway, but for some reason he's our main character. Next to him we've got his twin brother Roba. Yeah, I, I don't think you um, I don't think you really get how twins work like they need a, 
Then he like looks similar and um Oh yeah, one of them can't be some dumb freaking robot. Robot is supposed to be like the nerdy one, I guess. He's sort of prudish and um I'm trying real hard to remember what his personality was. I swear I watched this entire show like 20 minutes ago. And finally Alpha, this domo looking guy. He's the most interesting of the three. I mean, he better be. One of Ben's only conditions for this show was that Alpha had to be in it. So what did we just need to see about him? He's like the slob of the group. He's dumb and eats a lot, but ends up saving the day in the end. Isn't that funny? It's like, it's it's because it's not what you'd expect, except it happens every episode, so it's exactly what you'd expect. Wanna just go back to talking about the history? That was way more interesting than the actual show. Anyway, there's only really one consistently used side character, and again, that's Tux Dog. I don't really know who he is. He's not the mayor. He's also not like the manager of the problem solvers, or at least he might not be. I don't remember them ever saying that. But really, he's just there for exposition. So whenever there's something going on in the plot and the writers just want the episode to end along with their lives, they just have them all go up to Tux Dog for help. I actually like his voice a lot. It's done by John DiMaggio, who also voices literally every single secondary character. Greetings, problem solvers. I'd offer you some sorbet, but I'm afraid it'd be wasted on you. I'm so glad I found you, problem solvers! He even narrates the intro. This is the story of three such heroes. Alfe, Roma, Horace, the problem solvers. What time is it? Time for you to shut up! So yeah, the show itself? Eh, it's not bad. It's not good, but... It's not bad. Wait, not bad? People have been ranting and raving about this show for years and all you have to say about it is it's not bad? Well, yeah, I mean, it's just sort of a harmless kid show. Although I don't blame people for not being able to see that behind these god awful visuals. Colors feel so bright. You know the part of every single YouTube review where the guy says, This thing was so bad it was painful to watch. Yeah, okay, that, but... But, but like, literally. The visuals for each episode were actually produced within a few weeks, compared to the usual months or even years of most other shows. This is because every aspect except for writing was produced within Flash which made the process a lot faster. That's supposed to be like impressive, but I feel like this only works if the end product looks good. So everything I do, every single thing, is all just a creation of one computer program called Flash. I kind of use that as my sketchbook, and I was creating these ladder shapes in the program as much as I do the videos or paintings all start in this very program. All right, let's address the elephant in the room. Come on, man. I'm not hurting anybody. No, not you. Every background in this show uses like all the colors. And they really love bright neon blues, reds, and yellows. But they still gotta have some sort of contrast, so it means making the main characters more muted browns, reds, and blues. But as a result, the backgrounds become way more interesting to look at. When a character isn't talking, they stand completely still with no expression, but the backgrounds are filled with flashing colors and moving pixel art. So I don't even register what the characters are saying half the time as my attention is slowly veered towards the random background elements. And it's a shame because at times where I think there are nice moments of character interaction, I immediately forget about it to focus on whatever is happening behind them. A girl can be better than a drum set. What? You sick, sick man. And these background characters, what happened here? I guess someone else realized that having characters consisting of dull muted colors wouldn't be interesting, so instead they just started coloring them the exact same as the background. So here we have a blue, red, and yellow character standing against a blue, red, and yellow background. Yeah, no, that looks fine. Oh look, a floating giant check. I don't see anyone holding that. What? There are people out there who actually really loved these stylized and surreal visuals. And while there are things I somewhat enjoy, like the incorporation of pixel art, I think the scenes that have an isometric view do a really good job at replicating that old school video game vibe. But again, I can hardly pay attention to it because there's just, there's, there's too much. There's just too much. I don't know what else to say. There's... Yeah, who was snuggling with me in the TV room last night? Who did I go skinny dipping with at the lake? Who did I just lend a hundred dollars to? I hate that I have to complain about this so much since it's clear Ben put a ton of work into making this world as stylized and varied as possible, but it just doesn't look good. I'm so genuinely shocked no executive stepped in and was like, 
Yeah, uh, we actually don't want to give our young audience seizures or impair their vision. Despite the show flopping in pretty much every aspect, Cartoon Network for some reason greenlit a second season. That's something I see these networks do a lot. Present a new show and hype it up, then when around when it starts to air, renew it for a second season to make it look like you're super confident in it doing well. It's safe to say Cartoon Network have been called out in their bluff a good few times now. So yeah, Problem Solvers was renewed for a second season, but they decided not to air it. Then I guess when the show was licensed out to Netflix, they decided they'd dump out the unearned episodes there. So did season 2 fix any issues? Eh. They actually took the characters out of their home a lot in this season, to put them in more toned down environments. I guess someone told them to step in and just stop with the colours. But this season actually focuses a lot more on the characters doing other stuff besides problem solving, so the plots can become more unique and not fall under the same structure each time. Unfortunately though, I think this season is way worse. With no stimulus overloading backgrounds, it means your focus is solely on the dialogue and yeah, it's boring. There are people who say when you look past the visuals, the show isn't that bad. And yeah, you're right, it's not that bad. But I'd rather a train wreck than something that puts me to sleep. So why was the problem solver so hated? Probably because it wasn't very good. It's a shame because Ben Jones clearly had love for these characters. Locations are jam-packed with references to Paper Rod's previous work, and he's been developing his creation for decades. But maybe his style just wasn't meant for a kid's cartoon. My name is Alpha and I'm here to spray. I like a chicken nuggets. I put them in my mouth. Another exciting case solved by the Problem Solvers.